Test, test, test. Test, test, test. Is there a sound now? Is there a sound? Sound, sound, sound? God damn it. Is there a sound? Sound? Sound, sound, sound? Sound? Test, 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 test. Test, test, test. Now, okay. Oh. Oh my bad. Uh, okay, okay. Okay, I'm gonna do the intro again. I'm gonna do the intro again. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, so we <laughs> start from the beginning. <laughs> okay. Oh man. Okay, so weekly for welcome for this weekly live stream on the latest and greatest news in Ethereum and DeFi. I do this every Monday at 10 a.m. East Coast uh, at 11 p.m. UTC plus eight. And in this video, I'm going to be talking of Ethereum 2. Uh, we're going to see how the situation is going on the network. Then uh, a DeFi project that did a giant 400% gain over the last week. Uh, and uh, and what? Tiache? What's happening in the chat? Just no video? What's, what's that? What do you mean no video? Who's saying no video? What? Uh, why why some really you, you, you guys say no video uh hey guys can you see the video cuz in the chat someone said no video uh i'm i'm not sure i'm not sure about that okay well uh let's just keep going so yeah nft news ton um and ton of news for enterprise um and if you don't know me i'm julian your host and on my channel eat the blocks i teach i teach blockchain development and um, and yeah, a very important my course on DeFi programming is going to be released on December 20th. I'm going to show some exclusive previews. So if you want to see these previews, just register with the link uh, I just I just posted. Uh, yes. Uh, okay. Yeah. So yeah, register for that. Okay. So let's get started with the price of. Oh damn. Uh, close that uh, bad bad tab management here uh, yeah so let's start with the price of ether so this week was uh, yeah like not not many change this week like minus uh, three percent so we kind of did a dip but uh, I think here like some institutional started to do some accumulation so we we backed at the uh, original level so yeah not much happening on uh, on ethereum for the price uh, this month for the yeah for for the gas price so yeah i always like to monitor the gas situation see what's going on so gas price um it's uh yeah nothing special uh stable here um yeah i don't know why i like to <laughs> i know i feel powerful when i monitor the metrics of the ethereum network makes me feel in control <laughs> okay so then uh, we're gonna see the situation for ethereum 2.0 so currently we are at Almost one one million five hundred thousand ether that are locked. So yeah, I mean people uh, kept pouring in to become validator. It's so that means that the current yield decreased a little bit. So when we just launched, we were close to sixteen percent. Now we are at uh, yeah two two point five percent something, and it's going to keep decreasing as more people are coming. But still, it's a very very uh, nice rate. Um, and so next, let's see some metrics for the beacon chain. So here, uh, what's very important is the network participation. So here, 99 percent has some dip here, some dip, but yeah, overall, we're still very high. Uh, a lot of active validator, 32,000. A lot of people that are waiting to be accepted because you need to wait. Uh, there is a, basically a limit of 900 new validators a, a, a day, so 12,000. That means there's uh, more than uh, 
more than a week actually it's probably more, more than uh, more than 10 days maybe even like two two weeks of waiting if you want to become a validator uh yeah and here below you can see that uh the blocks uh, keeps being mined so yeah everything is going well on eth2 uh, there were a couple of slashing events so some people actually lost their um some of their ether because they they had some problem with their validator basically they validated some um some blocks that were not correct so we ha we did have some slashing even but very very few um okay okay uh so so then some news from the ethereum foundation so there are always people who think that the ethereum foundation doesn't do much but um but actually, uh, Ethereum Foundation is, uh, is super busy doing like all sort of thing. So on the blog of Ethereum, they explain a little bit what they do. So uh, let's scroll down and, and see a little bit of the uh, different teams. So you have some teams for Ethereum 1, some team for uh, Ethereum 2.0. So not everything is uh, easy to understand. Like just the name of some teams already <laughs> is difficult. Like this one, for example, <laughs> apply uh, ZKP. I mean, I'm sure this is super smart. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, they do like some really uh, uh, deep research stuff for Ethereum 2.0. So it's not things that are sort of consumable uh, for the rest of us, but still, uh, it's still very important for the communities here. So all these things here are going to be uh, used internally, probably. Uh, yeah, Ethereum to uh, research, uh, super, super important. Uh, then Ewasm, so Ewasm, uh, this is a new virtual machine for the Ethereum network that's going to use uh, WebAssembly under the hood. So uh, right now the EVM is, um, is, is done really, has been built uh, in a very custom way, but it's better if we can reuse some building blocks that uh, are, are bigger, like the, like the WebAssembly. So yeah, here it's the, the teams about this. Formal verification, this is uh, about security. Uh, yeah, Remix, uh, yeah, Solidity is a, is a big team, uh, Zero Knowledge Proof, uh, yeah, Zocrat is related to Zero Knowledge Proof, yeah, so you can see a little bit what, what they're doing here. Okay, so next, let's see the situation for DeFi Token. So that was really, really good week. We had some uh, insane gain, like 400% for uh, Idle Finance. I will talk more about Idle Finance after and see why it increased so much. Uh, here, DeForce Protocol, 142%. Uh, Wing Finance, 61%. Wing Finance, this is a cross blockchain DeFi protocol. Uh, Haka, 47%. Uh, Haka, this is a collection of different DeFi projects. Uh, index. This is a um, basically a DeFi uh, a DeFi index that um, that invests in in, uh, in many DeFi protocol. Forty three percent cover. This is an insurance. Uh, yeah, some really really uh, comp token. Twelve percent. And for the losers, we don't have so many. So worst loser thirty three percent. So all of this project, to be honest, I never heard about them. Uh, so not. I don't see any really famous project that got a big a big decrease. Oh yeah, Ample Force here, uh, Saffron Finance. Uh, they are really, really volatile. They have some really good week and some really terrible week. But I think the project is serious. Uh, Hegic, a, um, I think they're doing uh, insurance on the blockchain. Uh, Keep the token of um, of the Keep network of, uh, of Andre Kornhe etc so overall pretty good week for uh defi token okay so next what the situation for lending so lending this week is pretty cool yeah 5.21 percent tether on compound uh, actually when i talk of compound i always forget that there uh, there is also the um, the liquidity binding incentive so you get actually a couple of percent on top of what you see here with the comp token reward um, and actually, if you're interested in this, you can check out my video on how to calculate APY uh, read, uh, yield in DeFi. I, I did uh, this video a couple of weeks ago, a uh, uh, couple of days ago, sorry. Uh, yes, then there's some really nice return here, almost 6% with USDC on Aave. Um, yeah, it's pretty solid. 
Ok, ok, so then let's move on to uh, the market cap in DeFi. So, in DeFi, 14.55 billion, a small decrease of 400 million compared to last week. But, but, but if we switch to Ether, we can see that actually in Ether, the picture looks a little bit better. So we start to see some Ether flowing back to DeFi again. Uh, yeah, so what's really important to know is that we have the competition of Ethereum 2 staking, but as more and more people are staking Ethereum 2.0, then the yield is going to be lower and lower, and so we'll see some people slowly coming back to uh, DeFi. Yes, so yeah, not much happening otherwise for the market cap in DeFi. Uh, so then we're going to talk of Idle Finance who did 400% for his token this week. So what is this? Idle Finance is a yield optimizer, um, like, uh, like Yuan Finance, but with a little bit more control. So you can specify the level of risk that you want. So here, best yield, risk adjusted, etc. And compared to Yuan Finance, it just feels a little bit better uh, productized. So they launched that token two weeks ago. This is a, a governance token. And um, and last week they reached 100 million of assets deposited in the protocol. So yeah, clearly uh, they're doing pretty well. And the last month they raised 1.2 million from VC. So yeah, because of that, uh, I like this project. Yeah, really like this project. Uh, then, uh, yeah, there is this report financial report of young finance that was created by the community so it hasn't been audited by any uh, any accounting firm but it has some interesting insights so yeah this is for the period to uh, from august 20 to october 20 so here you can see some insight for example, net income was almost 4 million. Uh, most of this revenue coming from this product, the Y Vault. Uh, then, in this Y Vault, most of the revenue is coming from the Y USD Vault. Uh, then, yeah, got some other, other insi insight. Like, 80% yeah, of the expenses are due to security costs and uh, yeah, salaries. And, 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 uh, and, yeah, if you're interested, you can. Uh, you can dig into it, but uh, I think it's interesting to see this and probably we're going to see some other DeFi community that start to do some um, report like this. And also, th that's a good sign that is sent to regulators because as we know, like regulators start to look more and more at DeFi. Okay, so then we're going to talk of NFT, a couple of news for NFT this week. So... Super Rare introduces a new auction system. Super Rare, this is... Uh, one of the leading marketplace for NFT. And uh, so they've been running for quite a while. I didn't know, actually. Uh, they've been running for more than three years. And so they had a lot of time to listen to their users, take some feedback. And thanks to this, they revamped the, uh, the auction system. So with a new auction system, they have more security and transparency. In it prevents frauds like uh, so here I think they, they use some technical word I didn't know about it uh, let me see where did they put this oh yeah here F they prevent fraud such as the chandelier and phantom beats okay so I don't know what it is but maybe some people who are familiar with auction know uh, that's that sort of thing but basically what I understand is that before because their system wasn't complete uh, it required the um, to be uh, uh, the process was partly done on Twitter. Like the guy who was doing the auction had to mention some sort of initial price on Twitter, and so yeah, I mean that was a, a little bit sloppy. And so yeah, so now everything is done in the smart contract and it is uh, much more much more secure. So yeah, we're going to see if with this they can uh, increase increase the. The number, the amount of auction they do every month. Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. Then, then, then. Next, uh, we have this other project, uh, uh, Send.co. So another NFT marketplace. I didn't know about them. And so, with the marketplace, you can buy tweets. 
from verified account with a and and put it in the NFT. So th guys, like this is just just so crazy. Like blockchain just never stop. You know, like one week maybe you see some craziness on the blockchain and you think, okay, that's it. Uh, that's the most crazy we'll see. And no, 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 no. Next week there is the guy finding something more crazy. <laughs> so yeah, like for example, you can find a, a tweet of Donald Trump that you like uh, or Joe Biden and, and yeah you buy the tweet and then they create an NFT and you <laughs> you own that tweet I mean this is just so insane uh, okay okay then 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 uh, yeah so Crypto Kitties so this is a, a blockchain game if you never heard about it uh, yeah so there is a, a Crypto Kitty who was accepted as a collateral in a crypto loan so there is this project there's this lending platform called nftfi it has approved a, a loan with um, a collateral of twenty five thousand dollars, which is a, a crypto kitty so basically someone borrowed money by pledging his crypto kitty so yeah this is really crazy uh yeah, so I mean, I really show you uh, what I was talking about the um, the merger of uh, NFT and and DeFi. We started to see some uh, hybrid project like this. So yeah, it's pretty cool. There is really a lot of innovation to be done in NFT, and compared to DeFi, it's still very very underdeveloped. So a lot, a lot of opportunity there. Uh, then I wanted to show you some nice NFT I saw on this website, people. Uh, ch -ch -ch so let's see. I really like that design. I mean, I to be fair, I've I've never saw some some design like this online. Really, the first time I saw this was like for for NFT. Uh, just just so creative, just so so beautiful. Uh, yeah, I, I really wonder how much time they they take to to do it. Uh, and and it's just insane, like how much they sell it, like ninety thousand dollar, fifty thousand dollar. Uh, $100,000. I mean, guys, like, seriously, like, I feel bad, like, because I, I'm trying, like, to, to sell my, my course to become blockchain developer, but, but no, you shouldn't be a blockchain developer. You should, you should be an NFT artist. It makes way more money, guys. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it looks simple like this, but, you know, we, we don't know exactly what it takes to reach that level. Um, like, it, maybe it's like a team who do this picture, uh maybe uh, maybe these guys have been doing this for for years i mean there is more to it than what we see here but yeah i find this nft to be really beautiful i'm not sure i would buy them for like 100k uh it's kind of it's kind of insane but yeah yeah it's kind of uh interesting to see this okay okay so we're gonna leave the world of art to go in the boring world of enterprise the boring world but still necessary because we we need this guy to really take off in DeFi. so 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 we had a lot of institutional who invested in crypto recently uh, this is this really really good so you probably heard of uh, micro strategy but this is not the only one so first of all mass mutual invested 100 million dollar in a bitcoin so mass mutual this is an American company that um, this is a life insurance that serves five million clients. They have a revenue of thirty billion dollar, an asset under management of almost seven hundred billion dollar. Okay, so some really big guy, and very very important. The most important, they have their headquarter in Springfield, Springfield, which is the city of 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 Homer Simpson like you should know right uh, <laughs> so yeah it's very bullish because it sends a signal to other life insurance and pension funds it's really really good uh, a strategy at JP Morgan said that uh, mass mutual Bitcoin purchases represent another milestone to the Bitcoin adoption by institutional investors one can see the potential demand that could arise over the coming years as the other insurance companies and pension funds follow mass mutual example. Yeah, I wouldn't say more, JP Morgan. Wouldn't say more. Uh, ch -ch -ch. <laughs> then, 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 MicroStrategy uh, add $1 billion of Bitcoin and Ether. So, 
MicroStrategy is a company that provides business intelligence software. Okay, well, I have to tell you something because my first internship when I was just out of grad school, I used a, a, BI, a business intelligence software and that was just so boring. It's incredibly boring, seriously. So, so these guys are in a very boring business. B boring, but lucrative, lucrative. And so this company, uh, MicroStrategy, this is one of the largest player uh, for that kind of software. And, um, and so in August and September, they already bought 425 million of Bitcoin as a reserve asset for their treasury. This is actually the primary reserve asset. And so it's how they became famous because before, we didn't really heard about this company. This is just, you know, like the sort of company that makes a lot of money, but they are just like in the corporate, like enterprise world, but like really the, they never really make headlines. And they started to become famous in crypto because they, they started to uh, use Bitcoin as their, their reserve asset. So it's, it's like very unusual for this, uh, for this sort of company. And so they announced that they will raise $400 million to invest in Bitcoin. So this is a new investment. So this will be just for qualified investors only. So in other words, you got to be rich. You got to be rich or you, you cannot invest in them. And uh, at the end of this investment, they will have 1.2 billion invested in Bitcoin, which is about 0.3% of the total market cap of Bitcoin. So I'm actually a bit surprised that they can raise money to do this because it's not an investment company. Eh? This is a software company that sells a boring software to big company. They already make a lot of money, but maybe they have some uh, really cool CFO, you know, like uh, maybe some guy who watched my channel. I don't know. <laughs> and so, yeah, that guy yeah, decided to be very innovative. So... I, I actually don't know how does this work legally, how they are evil, even able to raise money in order to invest in Bitcoin. I, I really, really don't know how this works. Maybe some people who know more about legal stuff can tell us. Uh, yeah, uh, okay, okay. So another institutional who invests a lot of money in crypto, this is Grayscale that invested $1 billion in Bitcoin and ETH this week. So Grayscale, we talk a lot about it. This is an investment company that manages cryptocurrency. This is a subsidiary to the digital currency group, DCG, which also owns the cryptocurrency news and digital media company, Coindesk. So if you're present a lot on crypto Twitter, uh, there were like so many conspiracy about about them. Like, uh, yeah, like some people, say, yeah, like they manipulate the 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 price of Bitcoin, blah blah blah. Like so many, so many bad stuff. Uh, I don't know why they have this like really, really bad reputation. Uh, yeah, when it comes to me, I I don't care about all this uh, all these rumors. All that matters is that this is a, a big company and they invest a lot of money in crypto, so that's good. So they have $7.3 billion in assets under management, mostly invested in Bitcoin and in ETH. I think this is actually the bigger holder of Bitcoin with 5 billion of Bitcoin in their portfolio. Uh, so this is more than 1% of all the market cap. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, ch -ch -ch yeah. Okay, so then another institutional that invests uh, a lot in crypto is CoinShares. This is another fund of crypto assets. I would put them in the same category as a uh, grayscale. Um, and then we had Fidelity Digital Assets that will allow its institutional customer to use Bitcoin as collateral against cash loan. So this is one of the biggest asset manager in the world, Fidelity, with 3.3 billion. No, 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 not not billion, not Julian, not possible. Uh, I think I wrote the wrong letter here. No, 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 no. should be 3.3 trillion, okay? Which is more than the GDP of France, should be the, the GDP of, uh, of Japan. Yeah, so basically uh, they, they manage as many assets as, as, the, as Japan produce in one year. Not bad, right? Um, so with this new service, they will target Bitcoin investors who are keen to turn their holding into cash without selling, like hedge funds or miners. 
So they will not make the loan themselves, but they will partner with a BlockFi, which is a crypto lending company. And in order to receive the loan, uh, you will need to also have an account with BlockFi. But this is just for institutional institutional investors to to get started. But yeah, it's good because it's going to it's going to create some uh, extra demand for Bitcoin because uh, you know the more the more use we can have of crypto and the the more bullish it is for for the price so all in this is pretty good um then we have jp morgan that settled a repo on its private blockchain okay so let's explain one of this so um first of all what's uh, what's a repo so a repo basically allow banks like JP Morgan to trade large quantity of securities and to borrow cheaply uh, which allow party to cash a to own a small a small return it's like repo trade are like basically a short-term loan um, and uh, it's basically you have a trader that sell an asset to another trader at set price and they commit to repurchase the same asset at a different price at a future date and so these repo are really huge for short-term financing on on financial market and um, so so yeah so basically and they're also working on their own uh, blockchain uh, which is called what's the name of the blockchain Onyx yeah and um, yeah and so like they've made a demo so they they completed this repo trade on their own blockchain so yeah we'll see JP Morgan has been very uh, very active in blockchain you know like they they are one of the um, they w one of the main contributor to something called a Quorum, if I remember well, which is a, a private blockchain project that has now almost merged with uh, with Bezu, I believe, or, or is very very similar. Uh, they are also very close to um, to consensus. I think there was a deal between JP Morgan and consensus. I don't remember exactly. Was it? Was it JP Morgan who invested in consensus or the other way around? But they, they were oh no no I think it was JP Morgan selling selling a team to consensus. Yeah, yeah, something like this. Um yeah, anyway, so I mean I wouldn't be surprised if like sometime next year we start to see some part of the financial market moving to private blockchain. So of course it's not as good as public blockchain, but uh it's really a, a good uh like a good uh, how do you say this? Um, yeah, super positive for for blockchain in general to see to see all the traditional finance world coming to us. Okay, okay. So then, Luca gets funding from uh, from S and P. So Luca is a company that produces crypto price data to Wall Street companies. So they are basically like the Bloomberg of crypto. And so just to give a little bit of context here, so SMP, so which itself is a company that uh, produces a lot of uh, indices for finance. Of course, the most famous one is the S&P 500. So SMP is entering the crypto space next year by launching some new crypto indices. They have, they've announced this last week. So they're already like preparing everything, doing some uh, acquisition that are relevant. So that's why they, they're doing this. Okay, so next, still in the enterprise category, so MetaMask is going to release an enterprise version of its wallet. Um, and so it's going to be aimed at trading firm and crypto custodian. It will provide them with the institu institutional grade features, which means it's going to cost a lot of money. <laughs> um, so it's including the ability to swap tokens borrow lend and invest in ethereum applications yes it's basically a metamask on steroids and the goal is to be used in professional DeFi trading desk uh ch 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 so what's the context so metamask has been struggling a little bit to generate some revenue that's why they introduced this uh, built-in exchange in their wallet a couple of uh, months ago so they can start to make some money uh, so yeah, I think this is a pretty smart move of MetaMask to go after the enterprise world, which has much more money than uh, the retail. MetaMask for a long time, they were just going uh, after retail users. And uh, yeah, they had a lot of success in terms of 
the, um, the user base grew a lot. I think they reached something like 1 million developer a few months ago. So like really major, major uh, milestone here. But yeah, in terms of revenue, they weren't making any. So now, yeah, they start to be, they start to be more greedy. They're like, yeah, guys, okay, enough, enough, uh, enough playing around. Now, now we're here to make some money. No, but that's, that's okay, you know, like they, they gave so much to the community. So yeah, that's, that's, I, I want them to make money. Um, then a Japanese city is going to try pl a blockchain voting system. So this is just for local elections. So a slightly lower stake, but still we have to start somewhere. So yeah, let's, I, I'll be curious to see what kind of blockchain they're going to use. Um, yeah, I should use Ethereum. Of course, of course. Um, okay, and then we're going to see some news about regulation. Mm, I love regulation. <laughs> so there are some rumors about regulation on self-hosted wallet in the US. So basically self-hosted wallet is just wallets that are not, not uh, controlled by centralized exchange. Yeah, so we heard a couple of rumors, and um, and so these rumors appear to be to be true. So Brian Armstrong, which is the CEO of Coinbase, reiterated his concern about this. Uh, so he tried to uh, yeah to make uh, this guy to to, to uh, reach out to this guy's secretary. I don't know how you say this. Nanking, Nanking. Oh my God. Well, well, let's say Secretary M. We'll call him Mr. M, okay? It's easier. <laughs> so, yeah, he tried to explain, Brian Armstrong tried to explain this guy how uh, the project of regulation will be will be bad for, for the U.S. But the U.S. is not the only one having really bad ideas at the moment because France, my great country, is at war with crypto. And by the way, guys, this is a horrible flag. Seriously, like, who wrote this article? Like, Yogita Katri? Like, seriously, where did you find this article? Like, did you guys run out of budget to hire some freelancer? Like, what happened? Like, this is a disgusting French flag, okay? Like, increase the flag, the, the flag budget for next article, right? <laughs> so, basically, in France, there are going to be some new very strict regulation that will make France one of the least welcoming country in the world for crypto. Yes, we can be first at something. Yes, yes. So this year in France, we won a couple of contests. So, contests. so first one, least welcoming country for crypto. Yes, yes. World most affected country by, by COVID. Yeah, we won already two times. Yeah, let's keep going, France. We're doing great. So... KYC procedures will be obligatory for any amount transferred before there was a minimum threshold of 1,000 euros. So below that, there was no KYC. So it's not only compulsory for, for fiat to crypto, but also for crypto to crypto, which is totally nuts. And the official bullshit reason is to fight terrorism. So as you know, after the recent events of, of, of France, yeah, there was some terrorism. So... And, uh, and some of these terrorists were financed with Bitcoin. So, yeah, of course, of course, it makes sense. We need to make uh, KYC for, uh, for everybody. Totally makes sense. Like if terrorists cannot use fiat money, right? Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's, that's the problem in France and in Europe in general. Like we just have like too many law, too many, too many uh, regulation. And, and talking about law, I'm actually going to teach you something. So... Do you guys know how we can say, how we say French, France in Chinese? We say fa guo, and it literally means the country of low. Fa is like, th this character means means low, the country of low. So even the Chinese, they know, they know we have too many low. <laughs> okay, okay, so next, some news for developers. So there is new EIP for Flash Loan. EIP it means Ethereum improvement proposal. So that's basically a um, a sort of uh, a specification to create some standard in the Ethereum community. 
And so the goal of this specification is to standardize flash loans. So now uh, we have different DeFi protocol that, that each do their flash loan the same way, but with this this uh, this specification, we want to standardize all of this so that uh, each flash loan provider respect a, a standard interface, and maybe on top of it, it can provide extra feature. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I would love it. I would love it because right now this is like super painful to have to deal with the, all these different fla flash loan provider. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, then, then, then. Oh yeah, so the, uh, I like this article of uh, Remix, which documented the latest updates. So actually, the team of Remix has been hard at work, but because this is a, a tool that we we just use the basic function of Remix, so we don't always pay attention. But there are actually so many things you can do with Remix. Like I had a look, and I, I had no idea. For example, I didn't know it's possible to run some script in some JavaScript script in Remix. So you can basically sort of simulate your DAP I in Remix. So yeah, I'd like to try that. Uh, then uh, yeah, maybe some more uh, some more internal update. Oh, yeah, there is some unit testing also. I never did unit testing in Remix. Uh, I want to try that. I had the debugger, I, I used it already. Um, yeah, and, uh, and after I think it's more like, uh, more like, more internal updates but yeah good job good job remix team and uh, and lastly there's this new project that shows you the different bug bounty for the DeFi project so that's a good way to monetize your skills so it's probably not I wouldn't recommend beginners to um, to waste time here because it's probably above your level. But you know, if you've been learning blockchain for like uh, six months, one year, like probably you can uh, we can make it. And uh, and as you can see, the rewards can be pretty high. So yeah, I'm after it, it all depends how fast you do it. You know, like a let's say that one fifty thousand dollar, but it takes you uh, I don't know, like takes you a year to do it. Well. Uh, yeah, it's it's not it's not so good, but like I know this one for example five thousand dollar. If you yeah if you can uh, if you can make it in like in couple of day or in uh, in one week then uh, yeah it's it's a lot of money. So yeah it's a it's a nice way to monetize your skill. Yeah. So okay okay so this is the the end. So now we're gonna do the Q and A. Yeah very quickly I put the link for my uh, the announcement for my uh, DeFi programming course if you haven't registered yet register so this is just to be notified when the course comes out uh, the course is not out yet it's going to be uh, released later in December all right all right all right guys so now I'm going to going up in the chat uh, and uh, and see a little bit the question so hi Dunamis Sergey Abra Diraj uh, um, in uh, THX, Derek, Alex, uh, Batman, uh, Negus, uh, Turkey, Neck. Yeah, we have many people. G Gilles is here also. Okay, so first question. Let me see, let me see, let me see. Where is the first question? Julian, I have a question from Abracadabra. What are your thoughts about all the AMM DEXs which are trying to work cross-chain on Polkadot, like Polk, Polka Starter, Polka Swap, Akala? Which one of the projects could really work? Uh, yeah, I think this is interesting in the sense that if it could be used as a template to go between Ethereum and uh, and side an L2 scaling solution sidechain of Ethereum. So, I I don't really believe that there will be a lot of demand, for example, between Ethereum and like maybe Binance Smart Chain or something like this. But I think the main use cases will be inside the Ethereum ecosystem uh, between Ethereum and and the sidechain. But I'm not sure that podcast starter can can do this uh yeah i think i think podcast starter is it would be more like between ethereum and uh and binance smart chain for example uh abracadabra other question 
uh, Julie is having every Monday plus 300 subs. So I think I'm not alone with like this output. <laughs> oh, I mean, yeah, like so plus 300 subs in one day. I, I, I wish, I wish. Um, I'm not there yet. But, uh, but yeah, next year, let's do it. Next milestone. Then Batman. Um, don't know if I missed it, but a lot of crypto companies now are going for bank status to hold crypto and vice versa. Interesting. Uh, I didn't know that. I knew that uh, banks uh, in the US can have this new uh, regulatory uh, status where they can hold, they can be like a, a crypto asset custodian. But I, did, I didn't know that crypto company also uh, try to go for, for bank status. Yeah, it's really interesting to see this con convergence. Uh, Negus Tech asked me, where do you think is best resource for DeFi Legos? What do you mean? Uh, do you mean, do you mean that uh, to, um, to learn or to or a tool? So a tool is um, a nice tool we can use. It's, it's called Money Lego. And I actually have a video about this. This is a JavaScript library. And if you want to learn, I have a ton of video about DeFi programming on my channel. So yeah, I have a playlist about DeFi programming. Then I have also another playlist for DeFi, DeFi app projects. So yeah, you can check my channel. Uh, ch -ch -ch. Then, 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 then. Turkey Neck McConnell, what up, Julian? Did you stake ETH for the Beacon chat? No, no, I didn't. Uh, unfortunately, no. I wish, I wish, because I, I like. At uh, I think the yield is pretty good. It's probably it's going to stay. I, I believe it's going to stay like above ten percent for, like maybe half a year. So yeah. Uh, ch -ch -ch. Batman uh, to, to, to validate the ecosystem when banks use blockchain. Yes, indeed, indeed. Uh, to, to, to. Abracadabra, question for Julian. From your point of view, does Project as Acropolis was to stake and hold and invest with them or is it just FOMO because Andre Kone merges with them? Um, I'm, you know, even though Andre Kone is uh, very respected in the DeFi industry, I don't get so excited about partnership. I, I don't really see this as a a validation, a huge validation of Andre Connery, which say, oh, this is an awesome project, blah, blah, blah. I just see it as, you know, Andre Connery, you want to grow his own project, then you find some, maybe some other uh, project that seems decent. Then they want to, they want to do something together. They do it, he does it, but I don't think like uh, Andre Connery necessarily think like uh, that means oh Acropolis is like the project of of the century, um, yeah yeah. So I would say if you like Acropolis, you like what they're doing, just you can invest. But uh, yeah, don't I wouldn't just follow Andre Connery. Uh, ch -ch -ch. No no no. Uh, then 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 then. Let me see, let me see. Next question. Abracadabra. Question for Julian. Hey, you know what? I, I love it the way you do it, Abracadabra, because this is so clear. Because I don't always know if this is a question for me or if it's just people uh, chatting. But you, it's clear. It's like, question for Julian. Like, you know how to attract my attention. So, Julian, I would love if you could tell us more about ERC31337. Oh, my God. Like, this... This ERC is so long, like already, like the code of the ERC makes me scared. You know, it looks it looks complicated already. <laughs> Which is used by Rootkit. Uh, okay, okay. So yeah, I can have a look, but uh, yeah, just have absolutely no idea what is this uh, this ERC. Uh, yeah, maybe another video. Uh, Gary Sen says, "Yo, yo, Gary, yo, Negus Tech." Uh, question. Where can I register for the course? Very good question. Uh, so I guess you mean six, fig six figure blockchain developer. So, 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 uh, let me give you the link. Uh, so let me, let me at you. Ne can I do at? Yeah, I can do at. Okay, I, I'll post the link for you. Negustech, okay. 
Uh, ch -ch -ch then, then, uh, Javier saying hi, hi Javier, Jose, greeting. Uh, ch -ch -ch. Then, uh, Turkey Neck saying, what do you think about uh, tokenization of real estate or even tokenizing ownership on one's future income? Like future athlete that need equipment and preparation. Okay, there are two different questions. So tokenization of real estate. Yeah, I think this is great. Actually, this is very relevant to me because you know I, I start to do some research about real estate because yeah, I'm a stage in my life where maybe I would like to invest in, in the near future. And uh, I was checking the transaction cost, and if you compare to financial markets, this is so ridiculous. Like in France, we have to pay something like all fees considered something like seven percent if it's like uh old houses maybe a little maybe five percent for new houses so yeah this is just uh seven percent that means like if you invest hundred of thousand of dollars seven percent that means you just to break even like you need to to wait like probably at least two years uh easy so I think there are like a lot of people who just take advantage of this system. Uh, like, yeah, too, too, too much the too much friction here. So, yeah, if blockchain can uh, improve this, I know that real T on blockchain on um, I think they're on Ethereum trying to do this. But the big issue we're gonna face is is basically we need a a legal framework that recognize your ownership based on the blockchain. So I think it will come. I think for that we'll have a private blockchain. I don't think we'll have a public blockchain. I think we'll have a private one because there is also some privacy issue. So I don't think authorities will be comfortable to put this on the on the public blockchain. Um, also, I think it's going to be uh, implemented differently in each country. But yeah, I do think I do think in a, at some point we will see uh, ownership will be moved to block to blockchain and um and then we can we can have way cheaper cost of transaction yes 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 uh and then the second question like tokenizing your future income i think so you're talking of personal e personal uh token i have a video about this if you are interested yeah i think this is super 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 cool we we haven't seen much in this there was just this guy uh, alex i think it's a french guy actually who did this in San Francisco, he tokenized himself and then he promised to uh, pay out his future income. But apart from this, we haven't seen much potential, but I think that's the kind of thing that can really make a lot of buzz on social media. I could totally see like media going like so crazy about this, especially in this context of crisis where it's just hard to to find jobs, hard to, to make some income. You know, we, we need to like government needs to to be a little bit more um open minded and let people be more creative but unfortunately they do exactly the contrary uh, they need to if they are unable to solve the the solution then they they need to um admit their lack of uh, of competency and just say okay well i mean why not accept that kind of creative solution so yeah i'm i'm super excited about this like personal income a uh, personal token yeah um Jose is saying, do you hear about impermanent gain? Uh, it will lo work like an option. You pay a premium to protect from impermanent loss. Um, so I know that there are some projects who are trying to solve impermanent loss, but I wasn't aware of this expression impermanent gain. Um, do, you have, do you know of any project who invented this expression? Yeah, I'd be curious about this. Sergey is saying, question. There is a sense to develop arbitrage smart. It, do you mean? Oh, okay. Do you mean? Does it make sense to develop arbitrage smart contract at this time? Will it be compatible with Ethereum 2.0? Um, yeah. So it's never too late to do some um, to to try to do some arbitrage. So that's what we do on my course on Flash Loan. Is it compatible with Ethereum 2.0? Well, most likely yes, because Ethereum 2.0 will do everything they can to be backward compatible with Ethereum 1.0. Uh, we don't know exactly for sure, but just I can tell you in general, as a developer, most projects, they try to stay backward compatible because it'd be, it'd be such a mess if we don't have, uh, if there is this huge split between Ethereum 1 and Ethereum 2. Actually, you know, Ethereum 1 will become 
will become one of the shards in Ethereum 2.0. So uh, I I think it requires that there is backward compatibility. Yeah. Um, na, 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 uh, okay, so... Na, 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 dun, 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 dun. Gary sent it, I believe that crypto exchanges want to position themselves for CDBC. Oh, you mean like the sort of... Uh, a government blockchain and that's why they have been applying to become banks what do you think um yeah i have, haven't done enough research about this uh i need yeah i need more more research about this but uh yeah i mean coin maybe not all exchanges want to do this but maybe the bigger one like a uh, coinbase for example yeah i think like for the really big exchange like uh yeah, I think they might be able to to become bank. Yeah, totally possible. Like the the smaller one, or the one that seems a little bit less legit. I I don't think so. Uh, crypto era. Say, which crypto do you invest in? Ethereum, Ethereum, and I also have some stable coin in some uh, some lending protocol. Like uh, in I have some Tether in uh, in in Compound, but uh, nothing nothing too exciting. But uh, yeah, I think now I want to to start to invest uh, invest more and like maybe be more a little bit uh, systematic. Like maybe every month invest maybe maybe ten percent. Uh, it's still it's still very conservative. Maybe like ten percent of my income, and maybe like five percent in uh, in rock solid crypto like ETH or Bitcoin, and the rest in like more speculative thing. Yeah, and like keep doing this every month um, and. But I, I, I would be, I would be a holder. I wouldn't be a trader. I, I would just keep them for keep the the crypto for a long time. Except, except for the really risky one, the really risky one like the moon. And then I'll be done to sell them right away. But ETH and Bitcoin, I'm a holder, uh, for years, for years. I, I don't care if it's uh, yeah, if there is like a huge crash, it's I, I just keep it. I keep it. Yeah. Uh, but but one thing which is super super important, it is um you you shouldn't invest too much of your income or of your personal asset because otherwise you start to become really emotional and then you start to check the price every day and you start to make really bad decision like me for example if i just invest 10 percent of my monthly income if bitcoin or ether crash well it's uh it's a bit annoying but it's not the end of the world but if you start to put like everything you're going to be too emotional so that's the big mistake right um uh, art jump saying great content man thank you i've been following your tutorials and video for a while now please don't stop there is not much content like yours on youtube oh man thank you so much thank you so much yeah it means a lot to me yeah like uh this is really a lot of work and uh, i i appreciate it yeah yeah so uh, then wakas wahid saying what is best ether js or web web js uh what device stack is best um before i used to use web3 and now i start to use etherjs more and more because i think the api makes a little bit more sense but really i don't think it matters so much like you you can be a good blockchain developer by using either of them really uh, it's just a matter of, of personal preference as for the rest uh yeah, I use JavaScript, uh, React, uh, Bootstrap, um, uh, Truffle, Open Zeppelin, the, the really, really classic stuff. Um, I, I don't use uh, TypeScript. I like to keep it simple. Yeah. Uh, ch -ch -ch. Then Josie, Josie say, where will, will go the proof of work miners of ETH 1.0 when proof of work ends? Um, well, they will they will just get rid of the the old machine and and they will become staker actually a lot of the current miners they staked for ethereum 2.0 you know it's like in every industry technology evolves so when they made their investment for the current mining machine uh, they they knew that it wouldn't be forever and they made a lot of money especially at the beginning uh, they probably huddle a lot of ether, and uh, yeah, now they're just going to scrape their old machine and uh, and become staker. Um, I'm 
not sure exactly how, how they're going to run their validator nodes because the whole point of Ethereum 2.0 with proof of stake is that everybody can run a, can run a validator node. You don't need any specialized hardware. So we will see if in the future we'll see some specialized hardware coming up for Ethereum 2.0. We'll see. Uh, na -na -na. Uh, then, 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 abracadabra. Question for Julian: What do you think about proof of work after Ethereum 2.0 and end of BTC mining? Uh, oh no, okay, okay, no, already. Uh, yeah, I think I think I kind of answered the same question before for for Josie. Uh, ch -ch -ch. Negus Tech, question for Julian. For a blockchain developer, who, who should one follow in Twitter? You should follow me. <laughs> That's it, only me. <laughs> no, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, Vitalik Buttering. Uh, who else, who else? Uh, the, there's this guy of, of Bankless, the, the sort of DeFi newsletter. Who else? Uh, there is, uh, yeah, the maybe you can uh, follow uh, the 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 CEO of uh, of Truffle. I uh, like this guy. Uh, who else? But like to be honest, I, I'm not on on Twitter very much. Yeah, I I mean I know it can just take you so much time to be like to follow all the all the conversation. Yeah, uh, I'm not a Twitter guy. Uh, uh, Gary Sente, this channel has helped me to get started on blockchain development. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Gary. Abracadabra, uh, Negus Tech, traitor, we are all gel maximized here. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Turkey Neck, they, thank you for the content. It's awesome. Hey, thank you, Turkey. Davian. Thanks for everything, Julian. Been a developer for a long time, and your video inspired me to pick up Solidity. I'm now the lead developer for DeFi Coin. Cool, cool, awesome, awesome. I'm really happy to hear it. Yeah, it's cool. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. And if if some of you want to, you know, you want to uh, talk about your your personal project, sometime I, I accept a personal interview uh, on my channel. So. If yeah, you you're working on a project, you want to talk about it, you can send me an email. I can I cannot guarantee that I accept everyone, but uh, but yeah, sometimes I do. So yeah, because I mean I, I see that some people work for some some blockchain project here. Um, Gary Sante, so what happened to the NFT ID you mentioned before? Um, do you mean the which which NFT ID you mean to? To create a voting system for for the content of uh, eat the blocks is that what you mean? Uh, yeah, I mean this one I haven't uh, haven't forgotten, but uh, yeah, right now I'm, I'm not focused on that. Right now I'm focused on on the course on DeFi. Uh, and uh, Batman saying no, 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 mining is far from dead. Actually, miners had the ETH2 ID. Uh, very few of us see the benefit as you can easily make those gains with ETH movement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My mining is, is far from dead, and for for Bitcoin, it will continue for for a lot of time. That that's for sure. Um, okay, guys. Well, I see no more questions coming, so I think we'll wrap it up. Yeah, that that was great. A lot of people today. Yeah, sorry for the mess up at the beginning, uh, the the mic problem. Like, ah, uh, there's just so many technical problem that can happen with live stream that like you guys have no idea uh like you think this is simple but oh like everything can break like internet connection my camera like just <laughs> uh, but this is life this is life yeah okay guys okay guys well we're gonna wrap it up thanks for coming here and i'll see you later this week i probably do another live stream um i'll tell you by by email have a have a good week and I'll see you later. Yeah. See ya guys. Bye bye.